Hello, my name is William Sutherland, Bill Sutherland, Mirren Rothschild Professor of Conservation Biology at the University of Cambridge. And I'm delighted that with a group of 76 authors, a global group of experts, we produced this open access book, Transforming Conservation, a practical guide to evidence and decision making. And we really hope that it will transform conservation. We're really serious about the need to do so and the need to describe processes that can improve the way in which we operate. And we're interested in that because for a long time it's become clear that there's serious problems with some of conservation practice, with actions being carried out that are not very effective, that can be improved. And we want to work out ways in which we can ensure that's much less likely to happen. Uh, and this can, can work. So we know from medicine that they had similar problems and they transformed the subject with evidence-based medicine and experiments showed that the mortality rate, rate went down by 19% when they did so. Aircraft safety similarly been improved. So we can do that and we can do this approach, I think, across most areas of policy and practice, whether or not it's crime reduction or education, these principles apply widely. And so what are we interested in? We're interested in how you collate the evidence, how you interpret the evidence as to whether or not that evidence is relevant to you, how you put that evidence together, and then how you embed that in your decision making. And to make decisions, there are a number of steps. You need to work with the relevant communities, find out using a stakeholder map who should be consulted, who should be involved in the decision making. You need to work with experts because you need to take the evidence and work out what it means and work out what other information there is. But the literature shows that evidence uh, the, the literature shows that experts very often aren't right uh, and there are ways of improving the use of experts uh, and just asking an expert is an inefficient thing to do. Partly because uh, experts will incorporate their values uh, as well. You really want to separate what you should do, which is your decision, from judgments about facts, which is where you use the experts. And there's ways of uh, providing that judgment that can be greatly improved. And then there's next how you make the decisions. Again, uh, just having a rambling discussion and then making a decision uh, is an ineffective way of working. There are much more effective structured ways of making decisions that's more likely to give you a sensible decision. And then we want to embed evidence into practice. We want to work out how you can have guidance that's likely to be right. Uh, research by Harriet Downey has shown that in the UK, uh, most conservation guidance is actually pretty poor. Uh, it's often out of date. It tends not to be based on the literature. It's very hard to link particular recommendations to particular pieces of information to see whether or not it's trustworthy. So we can create evidence-based guidance, but we can also create evidence-based plans. We can create evidence-based funding applications, evidence-based assessment of funding. So there's all these different ways of making society much more rigorous in evidence use. And, and we see that as being critical. We see having a societal change so it's unthinkable not to use evidence when making decisions uh, should be the norm. Uh, we're delighted that this book is open access. We want it to be widely used and we hope that a wide community of policymakers and practitioners and the general public will read it and absorb the ideas and hopefully can uh, change so we have a better world. We have a better world in conservation, but perhaps in other areas of policy and practice as well. I hope you enjoy reading it and I hope you put it into practice. Thank you.